Hey everybody, Greg here and welcome to Archery 101. Hey everybody, this week on Archery 101 we're going to do another fact or fiction. And this one here is brought to me a guy who I was debating with about Katra, whether it affects speed or not. And he made the statement that brace height can affect the speed of your arrow. You know, I never thought about it. To me, brace height was used to reduce vibration in the hand and um, silence the string. Get, you know, get it a little quieter. I never thought about that. You know, does it affect the uh, speed of your arrow can increase it. Now the only way you can increase the speed of your arrow is by adding energy to it. We know that. It's basic physics. When you draw the string back, you're making potential energy into the limbs. When you let it go, that potential energy is kinetic, converted correction, into kinetic energy. That's it. That's it. That's how it works. All right, and people come up with me and tell me the stuff that oh, this doing this will increase. It, it can't. How can you? It, how can you create more potential energy? It's stored in the limbs, right? And a lot of this stuff I just don't see it. But this one's got me thinking. You know, there there could be something to this because when you make a shorter brace height, you're bringing the bow in, which is putting a little pre-done tension on those limbs. And then it brought to another question. Does the brace height increase the draw weight? So that's the two things we're going to test today. We're going to find out. I'm going to take a bow. Um, I'm going to put it at the minimum. Shoot some arrows through it through the chronograph. And then I'll twist my string and shorten it to the maximum. Shoot it through and find a difference. Now the big thing here on this, we've got to remember. If it's one or two feet, that's negligible. There, there's, that's not a difference because I can create up to a three to five pound, uh, foot per second difference just from my, my shot cycle. All right, so we're going to do a couple things. Then I'm going to put the bow on my rack and I'm going to test the draw weight. And let's see if the changes. So let's go on to the first test to see if the draw weight is changed by your brace height. All right, here we go for the draw weight test. This is a 1965 Ben Pearson Colt. It's marked off at 44 pounds at 28 inches. I have the brace height set to the minimum, seven and a half. You know, these uh, bows are listed for seven and a half to eight and a half. Here's my scale, already preset, taking into account the weight of the scale. So let's draw it back a few times and let's see what we get for a, uh, a reading. And there is 28, right about 44 pounds, just a tad under. We'll try to zoom you in so you can see it. Get it there. Yep, it's about 44 pounds. All right, now let's kick the brace height up. Brace height, eight and a half. Might be a pound difference if that. Go down, zoom in.
155. All right, everybody, I am done with the testing. And let me tell you something. I did a lot more off camera because this really intrigued me. I worked that scale for about 20 minutes just checking on that thing. And it's not what I thought it would be. None of them are. I'm slightly surprised, but I'm not surprised. All right, what do you mean by that, Greg? Well, I thought it'd have some effect, but if it did, I would have heard about it by now. So I was and I wasn't. So when it comes down to the draw weight, right, I had one pound difference max, and that could be fluctuation from me working the scale. So by percentage-wise, there is no negligible increase to my draw weight. For arrow speed, now this is a really good one. My arrow speed, I was really amazed at how consistent I was shooting, which is a good thing for me because that shows that my shot cycle is very repeatable. And I don't shoot right-handed a whole lot anymore. And I came back with a 154 feet per second for the eight and a half and a 155 for the seven and a half. One foot per second difference. That's nothing. Now, the, the really cool part is I could get a bigger difference in arrow speed by playing with my shot cycle. If I did not keep my back engaged and I let it go like that, I could lose four or five feet per second. If I pulled really hard and I did a really dynamic release, I could gain five, six feet per second. But I was trying to hit the same anchor point, which was my thumb under here, which is a good lock-in, and finger right there. And I was doing it every time, and I was really shocked. I shot at least 40, 50 arrows with each brace height, and I got no difference. So the original question was, does your brace height increase or decrease your arrow speed? Fact or fiction? Well, I'd have to call it fiction. It does not increase your arrow speed. I'm slightly surprised. All right. So boys and girls, you know the deal. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. You got to complain about my methodology? Keep it to yourself. No, put it down in the comments down below. I don't have a vice. I did what I can. And I, you know, I don't think that the results are going to change much. All right. So and I learned a lot today. You know, I never thought about it. But when the guy said it to me, that little thing, I was like, wow, I wonder if that's true. But now I know. So I'm not going to sweat it. But as long as I stay in the manufacturer's parameters, things are going to be what they are. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week with an all-new episode of Archery 101.